Hey guys, Will Hamilton here, bringing you a sort of classier look at tennis. Perhaps I'm uh, dressed up a little bit, going to uh, going to dinner in a minute, so the silly t-shirts have been put away for the moment. But what I want to do in this video is talk about a couple more lessons that sort of got reinforced to me when I was down at the Aussie Open. And this lesson in particular is going to focus on court positioning, both for singles and for doubles. I think when you look at the recreational game, the fastest way, probably the fastest way for you to improve is to improve your court positioning and your ability to move around the court and put yourself in the best position possible given the situation. So to kind of take a step back and sort of prove to you from a more theoretical standpoint how important court positioning is, I want to talk about some concepts from a training program we have called Tennis Ninja. Now I know many of you watching this video are familiar with DNO, QoS, and CP. We're going to explain all that in a second, but uh, well, in a second we'll explain it right now. Um, so DNO, that stands for Defense Neutral Offense. So whenever you play a point, you can be in one of those three states. You can be on defense, that's not good. You can be in a neutral rally, nobody has the upper hand, or you can be on offense, and of course that's where you want to be. Now to figure out where you are, there's two things you need to evaluate, only two things. The first is quality of shot making, QoS, quality of shot making. So basically, you know, that's pretty straightforward. If you're in a cross court rally, forehand to forehand, you say, is my forehand better than my opponent's forehand or is my opponent's forehand better than my forehand? And if my opponent's forehand is better than mine, it's probably not going to be a very good situation for me. I'm probably going to lose most of those points. So from that perspective, I would be on defense. But you also have to consider court positioning because what happens if your positioning is great and your opponent is completely off the court? And that goes both laterally and vertically. So it's both side to side and up and back. So if you're kind of in the middle of the court and your opponent was like out in the boonies, we're obviously only using this side of the court because I have a very professional drawing of a tennis court up here. But if your opponent's like way off the court and you're positioned well, then that's going to be advantage for you. You'd be on offense from a court positioning standpoint. So these two things actually work together. You got to consider both when you're trying to figure out, am I on defense? Am I in a neutral rally? Am I on offense? I'm kind of glossed over a lot of this. So hopefully it makes sense. Um, I haven't given any examples, but anyway, we're just going to run with it because I'm kind of getting this, you know, as long as you kind of have the general sense of this, um, this discussion will make sense. So there's kind of an inverse relationship here between quality of shot making and court positioning. So let me, uh, let me explain what that means. So I've got four uh, contact points up here. One, two, three, four. And we're going to say at contact point one here, you've got pressure level FYB. What does that mean? It means the amount of pressure you are applying to your opponent when you make contact with the tennis ball here, hitting your standard rally ball, nothing too fancy, just your standard shot um, when, again, you're positioned here on the court. Right smack dab in the middle of the court, maybe a couple feet behind the, uh, the baseline here. We'll add the T right there. Okay, so FYB is just a variable. I wanted to use FYB as opposed to X, so just a variable. So the question becomes, now if we make contact at point two here, which is you know a few feet behind uh, contact point one, still in the middle of the court, but further back, okay? So the only difference from a court positioning standpoint is you move further back. What do we have to do to apply the same amount of pressure to our opponent, pressure level FYB? Well, what we've seen here is because you've moved back, the court positioning, your court positioning has come down, okay? It's not as good. So to counterbalance that, the quality of your shot making needs to go up. So in other words, you simply have to hit a better shot when you're further back to apply the same amount of pressure. And maybe a good example there would be somebody like Andy Murray, when he plays up, he puts a lot of pressure on his opponents. He's got a, he got you know big groundies. His balls have a lot of weight behind him, but the criticism of Murray is he sometimes drifts too far behind the baseline. And when you get too far back here, even if you're really ripping the ball, 
taking longer to get over to your opponent, is losing some of that pace, so they're not going to be as pressed. The pressure level is coming down. So we've seen how when you move back to maintain that same pressure level, because the court positioning is down, quality shot making needs to go up. Now what happens when we come over to our uh, contact point number three here? Well, now the depth is the same between one and three, but you're over, you know, you're off the court a little bit. Your horizontal positioning has changed, and over here, not quite as good as being in the middle of the court. We're going to ignore inside-out forehands for uh, for this discussion. That's sort of a different uh, a different topic. So we're just going to assume you come over here, and if you're a righty, you're hitting a backhand, and you know. Over here, going down the line can be risky, less court, higher net, and if you do that, you also expose a bunch of court over here for your opponent to hit into if you don't hit a great shot. Cross court, you got to put a little bit more on it maybe to get it to go, you know, as deep because the court is longer cross court from over here than it is when you're in the middle. So the court positioning over here for a number of reasons, it's not as good either. So your quality of shot making to apply the same amount of pressure to your opponent needs to come up for slightly different reasons, right? Point two, it's the vertical, and point three, it's now the horizontal. But in either case, quality of shot making needs to rise when the core position comes down to maintain the same amount of pressure on your opponent. But now let's say you move forward into the court here. Point four, okay? So now you'd be up at net. You'd really be, you know, you know, your core positioning moving extremely forward vertically. Well, when that happens, when the core positioning actually gets better, then the quality of your shot making would need to come down to maintain the same pressure level on your opponent, right? Because if you're hitting a volley here at your opponent, if you hit the same caliber shot, obviously back here it's a ground stroke and up here it's a volley, but if it's the same caliber, then you're actually going to be exerting more pressure on your opponent. So you'd have to here maybe hit you know, a softer volley or something for the ball to get over to your opponent with the same amount of time and so on. So again, to maintain, to apply that same pressure level, when the core positioning gets better, the quality of shot making actually needs to come down. But what happens if your quality of shot making stays the same? What happens if you just, you know, you've got your standard shot here? What happens if you come up to net and you hit your standard shot? Well, then you're actually going to be exerting more pressure on your opponents, even though you're not hitting any harder or you're trying to do anything too fancy. To come back to Murray, he specifically said this. He said, look, my balls, when I hit, I'm putting pace on them. I'm hitting quality shots. My problem is I drift too far behind the baseline, and that diminishes the amount of pressure I'm putting, my, I'm putting on my opponents. So by simply adjusting my position forward, I'm going to be playing more aggressively. I'm going to be hurting my opponents more. So that was actually the same case with, uh, with Rafael Nadal. He's done a lot better in the last couple of years moving forward. He's actually become quite an aggressive player. Interesting stat that ESPN had. Uh, well, I'm not sure if it was ESPN. I was watching on, uh, on 7, the, Australian cha uh, the channel in Australia. They showed Nadal's contact point on his forehand and his backhand. Remember, Nadal's a lefty, so forehand's over here. His contact point... You know, they did those dots, you know, right? Dots all over the court where he's hitting his forehand and backhand. He was hitting all his forehands kind of here, but his backhands were further into the court up here. It's interesting. He was moving up for the backhands and back for the forehands. This, of course, was against Djokovic, and they showed Djokovic, and he was kind of more standard further up in the court. And, uh, you know, those subtle, little, those subtle little differences can really make a big difference uh, when you're talking about a pro-level match where the margins are so uh, are so narrow. But now let's talk about, now let's focus on doubles. You know, we've worked with the Bryan brothers, and I've talked about in the past how they are always trying to get to net. They're relentless to get to net. Well, the reason is we've just seen, we've just proved sort of, not scientifically, but maybe theoretically or something, why being up here at net just gives you an inherent advantage, right? You don't have to have sweet shots. You don't have to blast the ball. If you're up at net, you're, you're just applying more pressure because of this relationship here and the power of court positioning being forward. So the key here, whether you're playing singles or you're playing doubles, is be really mindful of that court positioning. Always try to move forward. Always try to move in 
and and you know get on the baseline for those ground strokes if you feel like you're you're drifting too far back. Obviously, within reason, sometimes you get pushed back, but you know try and play as up as possible. And if you're playing doubles, you got to move forward. There's just inherent advantages, especially at the rec level. You know, at the pro level, if Rafa's playing doubles, he can get away with kind of hanging back sometimes if he's hitting forehands because the quality of his forehand is so good. It's such an uh, 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 unbelievable shot, one of the best shots on tour, that it can overcome the disadvantage of court positioning. But for us mere mortals, for rec players, we don't have these massive shots. We, we don't have a shot that's so big that it can overcome the disadvantage of, of our court positioning. So at the rec level, it's almost more important to really be mindful and diligent about always having the best court positioning possible. And in doubles, that means get to net, control the net, because your opponents are not going to be able to blast you off the court. They're not going to be able to hit those benders that dip down and these crazy passing shots like you see on the Pro Tour. So certainly from a doubles perspective, get to net, and, uh, and you're going to have more success. So with that in mind, uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I'm going to go have dinner now. So please leave me a comment. Let me know. Uh, let me know how. Um, let me know how diligent you are with your court positioning. Let me know if there's any areas you can identify where you think you need to be a little bit more aggressive, or you can position yourself a little bit better uh, from the court positioning standpoint to uh, to give you just that positioning advantage over your opponent. Take a little pressure off of your shot making requirements. So with that in mind, thanks again, and I will see you guys in the comments and in the next video.